Hello, so my name's Lauren and I work for an online personal finance website called Money to the Masses. Now, I am currently in the process of purchasing my own property. So I have a range of videos on the Millennial Money playlist on the Money to the Masses YouTube channel, which talks about how I've managed to save a deposit to be able to buy a property. And I thought it would be really helpful to share my property purchase journey um, the highs and lows of purchasing a property as it happens and also it will help you to understand and have an idea of what you can expect when it comes to buying a property so to start off with the first thing that we did when we wanted to buy a property is we spoke to a mortgage advisor now our mortgage advisor is a recommendation from one of my friends um initially we did look at an online mortgage broker because we wanted to um, have an idea of how much we could borrow but in the end we went with someone who was recommended by one of my friends who had recently moved um so the idea of us speaking to a mortgage broker quite early on in the process is personally we wanted to be able to find out exactly how much we could borrow on our current salaries and unfortunately our buying our first home has coincided with the pandemic so this has had an impact on how much we are able to borrow and to be able to to buy a property and when we first spoke to our mortgage advisor um, at the beginning. She told us that we could borrow more than what we are currently able to borrow now. And that is as a result of the pandemic. And that's because looking at my finances and my partner's finances, he works in a job where he does shift work and he relies on um, overtime and bonuses. Um, but unfortunately, there's been a lot stricter criteria when it comes to purchasing a property in the current situation, in the current environment that we're in now. And um, so the first thing we did is we spoke to our mortgage advisor to find out how much we could borrow. So we had to send over our salaries, our, some pay slips um, and our outgoings. So she provided us with the form to fill out. Now, I have touched on this before. I've done previous um, millennial money videos and on how I cleared my debt. Now, we both decided that before we wanted to purchase the property, we was going to clear our credit card debt um, and doing so allowed us to maximise the amount that we could save towards our deposit. Now, once we'd cleared our debt, we spoke to our mortgage advisor to find out what type of property we could purchase um, depending on how much we could borrow. And this allowed us to save up a deposit towards our first property. So make sure you check out my millennial money video on what I did to clear off my debt and how I managed to start saving for a property. Now, caveat, we do live at home. So obviously some of these things um, were, I was fortunate enough to be able to do because I did still live at home with my parents. However, if you implement some of these um, savings tactics and these techniques, hopefully you will also be able to implement it and save for a deposit yourself, but it may take you um, a fair bit longer than what it did for me because of the fortunate position that I was in. Then once I'd clear, started to um, clear my debt, both myself and my partner, we opened a lifetime ISA. Now a lifetime ISA allows you to pay up to 4,000 pound a year and then you get up to a thousand pounds, so a 25% um, government bonus, which if you um, transfer in 4,000 pounds in a year, you get a thousand pounds back. Now, if you want to use a lifetime ISA to purchase a property, you can use it either to purchase a property or for retirement, but if you want to use it to purchase a property, then the lifetime ISA has to be open for a minimum of 12 months before you do so. So we opened our lifetime ISAs um, as early in the process as we possibly could because we knew we wanted to buy within a few years um, but we needed to have it open as soon as possible and there are some lifetime ISAs out there that can be opened from as little as one pound so you only need a pound to open up the lifetime ISA and then you can leave it there until you are ready to be able to save into the lifetime ISA 
Now, uh, my partner and I, we opened cash lifetime ISAs because we knew we weren't going to have the lifetime ISA open long enough to be able to invest to make um, the investing worth it. So obviously the general rule of thumb is if you are going to have an investment account, it should be open for at least five years um, to see any real benefit. But we didn't want um, this. We weren't interested in investing our money at this period of time. So we opened a cash lifetime ISA. I know that the interest rates are really low but we weren't interested on uh, making interest on our money we just wanted a separate place to be able to put our money and to take advantage of the government bonus now there are a variety of ways of how you can find out how much you could borrow like i said we spoke to a mortgage advisor but there are a variety of online calculators and a variety of websites that also share this information for you i did actually fill out some of these but they actually gave us a lower amount of what we were able to borrow because this is quite personal and it does depend on your personal finances and also on your outgoings. So this was the first part of um, my house buying journey. That's what we did. So to take away, you need to find out how much you can borrow. So to find out how much you can borrow, you need to speak to a mortgage broker. So speaking to a mortgage broker, they'll ask you your outgoings and they'll ask you your income. This will allow them to give you a rough estimate of how much they think you'll be able to borrow. This then allows you to be able to save a deposit and it gives you an idea and a steer of what type of property you are going to be looking for. Two, you need to work out how you can save, how you're going to save for a property. Have a look at a lifetime ISA. They can be used to save towards a property and then it allows you to take advantage of the 25% government bonus. And if you have any debt or if you have a large amount of outgoings, now might be a good time to take a look at where your money is going each month. Is there do you have something that has taken up a large portion of your income? And can you work towards clearing this off before you save for a deposit and start saving for a property? So this is the first part of my house buying journey. And I will share with you the second part in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about the house buying journey or anything that you want to ask me about the process of anything that I've found as I've gone along the way, then make sure you email me, lauren at money to the masters.